Absolute wonderful morning here on the Natal South Coast. Perfect weather for coming to the beach and having a good day on the beach, swimming. Fishing wise, I uh, don't think it's perfect. And uh, we brought Caroline and Mila for a little swim and some time on the beach. The wind's been non-stop every day for a couple of days. So, a bit of a break to get them out. And they're having some fun here in the tidal pool. So I thought it great idea after receiving so many requests from you guys to just run through casting a multiplier to quickly do a vlog on casting a multiplier this will be the first of a three-part series we're going to start with a very basic side of casting a multiplier reel now first of obviously you want to match this a multiplier reel with a multiplier rod things have changed and evolved quite a bit in the last couple of years so from about eight years ago, we get a much stiffer, faster load rod than what we used to, which gives us more action um, in getting more distance. Also, can put a bit more spin on the reel. Now here's the most important part when you start off with a multiplier reel, and that's building the muscle memory on your thumb to control the spool, control the reel. Once you get this going, it becomes second nature. The best, the best way to, to compare it it's actually with riding a bicycle. Once you get that underhand and it takes practice, you build the muscle memory in your arms, in your thumb especially, then it becomes second nature. Then you can really put power. But the biggest problem or the biggest mistake most anglers make is they want to see how far they can cast from where it go. They end up getting overwinds and uh, despondent and then they don't want to use the multipliers anymore or it puts them more fishing altogether. Now most important, guys, muscle memory in the thumb. Now I'm going to run through some basics on a multiplier reel. That's free spool. When you flick that over you can cast. All right? You're going to have your thumb on the reel to block it. That is controlled. How quickly that spins is controlled by this. All right. Now once you, you've got it underhand, the muscle memory is there and you're used to it and you're casting well, then you can start releasing this up to the point and when you flick it over it basically just just moves. It's, it's micromillimeters. You can feel it's moving sideways. If you've got it completely loose, you'll see it moves quite a bit. If you're tightening up so it doesn't move, you feel then, now you can control, especially for beginner casters. All right. So we'll pull the sinker up. Now what you do is you tighten this in the beginning so that when you flick it over, it won't get it over one. All right. I'm still using my thumb. It will get it over one if I just let it go, because it's not that loose. Now you can tighten it up a bit more. You'll see now, sinker isn't falling, and slowly release it, until it starts moving smoothly. Uh, got a line wrap on the eye there. Just tighten it up again. Take the sinker up, flick it over, it's moving. Tighten it so it doesn't move. Okay. I see that. Now if I leave it, it will get it over one. If I don't have my fingers on, which I'm having in the bottom here. So you can tighten it even a bit more. Take it up again. And that will just assist you in the beginning. You see now it's slowly moving down. See how I'm not touching the reel. All right. Now that's going to make it difficult to cast far. You're not going to cast far. That's to get you used to controlling the spool with your thumb. Another thing, I'm right-handed. I'm going to put my left hand on the spool. That's what this finger grip is for. You put it between your fingers, it gives you a nice firm grip on your rod and reel for casting and your other hand will be up top. All right, so very important. We use a shock leader because you'll snap your line with a heavy sinker when you cast. That's one of the reasons we use a shock leader. The other one is having that first eight meters when you hook a big fish, protecting that it doesn't cut you off because it's going to swim over rocks, it's going to swim close to other fish or whatever the reason it won't cut you off. Also when you're fishing off rocks it gives you that abrasion resistance that you don't damage your line when you bring it in because that first couple of meters might come over the rock. All right but for casting it helps that you don't snap off which results in you having a leader knot. All right this is a bimini twist with uh, improved all bright. That's on our channel if you want to see how to make that. 
Now I'm going to flick it over because I'm right-handed. My thumb will sit here, which is comfortable for me. Some people would prefer it that side. All you have to keep in mind is the knot must be on the opposite side. If I'm going to put my thumb on the left, I must reel it so that the knot sits on the right-hand side. So in essence, what I'm saying is the knot mustn't be close to where your thumb is going to be because when you release, that spins very fast and it will hit your thumb and take the skin off. That's a general problem. It normally happens in the beginning when you're not used to it. You reel up and starting off, you're going to have a drop length of about a meter, meter and a half to get used to real control. Let's go to the rocks and I'll show you what I mean. first like I said line control with your thumb it's muscle memory the other part of casting which is very important most guys make this mistake in the beginning when they start casting and it forms muscle memory and you don't do it going on with casting which lose you will lose you quite a lot of distance you're losing a lot of power if you don't use your left arm all right now this is what you're gonna do that's the action all right thumb on the reel and you're gonna cast. Now a lot of guys just use this to bring it a little bit down and they put all the power in the right hand. Now that's fine. You wanna put that power in your right hand. But guys, I'm gonna reiterate on that. When you start off, don't worry about power. The first things we're gonna get right is line control, spool control, and direction. Also the height you're gonna cast, and I'll touch on that now. But here's a very important part. You must teach yourself from the beginning. So then when you start applying power, you'll get more distance. Your left arm, that's a whole pendulum action. It's not just a swivel for this, you're gonna battle. If you wanna add power later in your cast, teach your left arm to pull while you push here. It's a one action. Pull down while you push and you're getting a lot more speed into your cast. Now the ideal cast starts off great and starts off slow and speeds up gradually at a very short interval of time. So from there, so in other words, put it, you, you're accelerating from zero to 200 kilometers an hour with that tip. But you're doing it gradually, and that will get you the best cars. Don't try from the word go to get the speed. The speed comes in the last bit, so you, that last bit is where you really put the speed in. And again, guys, do that later. For now, concentrate on line control and building that muscle memory in your thumb. So the best way to start with that, there's a meter, meter and a half drop. You're gonna stand straight out like that. And very important, teach yourself from the beginning, your left foot must point where you're gonna cast. Teach your feet that your left foot is facing and pointing in the direction you wanna cast. Your right foot can do anything, all right? The best position is that forming a 90 degree angle and standing like that to cast. Now to start off with, very simple position, you're going to do this, you're going to pull down and pull over to cast. You're going to release at 11 to 12 o'clock. In other words, I'm going to release the sinker there. Another very important part is don't look at the ocean where you want to cast. You look up 45 degrees. We tend to cast where we look. And if you're going to look at the ocean when you cast, or in front of you where you want to cast, your sinker is going to hit a low profile and you're going to cast it then, it's not, it's not going to be a great cast. The whole idea is you want to cast up 45 degrees at least. You want to put it up 45 degrees into the air and then you'll get the distance. I'm going to do one quickly. You'll put your thumb on the side here and that you'll hold the line with. And that gives you a lot of strength. If you put it around there with a the clip in the back, you're going to do this. And I'm going to look up where I want to cast, 45 degrees, and you're going to aim there. And you're going to cast and release, and just hold your thumb slightly on this pull. Now in the beginning, you see I've got an over one, because I'm looking at the camera, not looking at my sinker. All right, just to go back to what I just said, you watch your sinker. Once you've released it, you watch your sinker so you can use your finger to get used to blocking as soon as it hits the water. So you gradually can slow it down, not too much, you'll lose some distance, but in the beginning it's a good idea. When it hits the water, you block it. I've released this spool. Obviously it's your choice, in the beginning you're gonna tighten it up a bit like I explained, yeah? So when it hits the water, it won't get much of an overwind. All right, so let's just run through that again. 
Just take a meter, left foot pointing in the direction. You want to pass. You're looking up 45 degrees. You're going to hold it like this. And while pulling your left arm down, your right arm will push through. Look at that. Okay, so you watch your sink and you stop it as it hits the water and you won't get it over one. And obviously, you're not going to try and throw this off the planet in the beginning. You're going to take gradual casts and get your arms used to the action, your feet used to where they have to be, looking at the angle you have to look, and uh, teaching your thumb to release at the right time, and to control the spool gradually. When, another important part, guys, if you battle in the beginning with overwinds, I'm going to show you a little trick. When bringing your line back on this spool, put it fast and then slow, gradual, you reel it up and you do two slow, gradual, packing it, then one fast, the other, then one, two slow and one fast. And that will assist when you get overwind that the overwind isn't so big. Because of that one fast you put like that, it will block the overwind a little bit that uh, your overwind won't be as big. Just to run through everything again guys, set your reel on the side here, not to spin as fast, so that when you flick it over the sinker gradually goes to the bottom and it doesn't get a big overwind. Start off like that, thumb on the left, remember the notch on the right, left foot pointing in the direction you want to cast, right foot 90 degrees to that. Left arm pulling while the right arm's pushing, make your drop only a meter, meter and a half in the beginning. We'll get into the swinging and the long casting and getting power into your cast later. Now this technique I'm showing you is also great for accuracy. A good way if you go to a field or even on the sand on the beach, you set a marker, you put something down, you walk 60 meters from it and you start casting towards it. Try and hit it. Then you move to 80 meters, then you move to 100, then you move to 120 and you carry on doing just this overhead cast to get your accuracy your muscle memory, your thumb control in your line, get all of that right before you start swinging and trying to get miles of distance, which will just frustrate you. If you follow this procedure I'm showing you, the casting can become very easy. Another mistake the guys make from the inland, they don't cast for a year, they come to the coast, they take their rod out and they want to cast, and the first cast is a mile because there's a couple of guys watching. That's not the right way. From two, three months before the time, go to a dam, go to a field, have a couple of casts till you're confident again. Start with over it, then start with your other technique. So when you come to the coast, you're not frustrating yourself. You're not wasting time. You can get stuck into real fishing. So I'm going to show you guys one more time. Flick it over, not on the opposite side of the thumb. Elbow up and up. My right hand is there. Left foot pointing in the direction I want to cast. Right foot 90 degrees of it. Looking up at 45 degrees and releasing at 11 o'clock. Pulling down while your right arm is pushing up. Then watch the sinker so you can stop it in time when it hits the water that you don't get over one. There we go. Hope that helps you guys. In the second edition, we'll run through stretching and using your hips as well to add additional power. And then in the third part of this series, We'll cover the swinging part and getting maximum distance out of what you do. Just remember, whenever guys, it's a typical guy thing, when they grab a rod and it's about casting, they always want to see how far they're going to cast or can cast. It's a show off in front of the other anglers or whatever it is, I don't care. But we tend to do that. <coughs> Accuracy is most cases the most important part. Yes, there's points you have to get a lot of distance and that you'll put it. But in most cases, when we run through reading water and you want to put a bait at a certain spot, you need to be able to combine accuracy with power sometimes when it's a long shot. Other times, most of the time, it will consist of an overhead cast getting it into a spot if you want a specific fish, if you want to fish a specific spot. Even using a smaller lighter rod fishing for the smaller fish, that overhead cast teaches you how to get direction. Now all of that comes together at the end of the day that you can put power behind a cast. 
and still get good direction and accuracy to find the fish. So watch next week and the week after for part two and part three of getting this as casting a multiplier reel, applying all the power and accuracy eventually and getting the distance that most guys want to get. Now let's just recap quickly in the first section. What we did was just concentrating on the basics to get your memory, muscle memory and your thumb and your arms ready to cast so you can get used to controlling your reel. Very important, before you start swinging or trying to cast hard, that is the most important. So let's just go through what we did in the first one. Your left foot pointing in the direction you want to cast. Your right foot you put behind it like that. Your leader knot away from where you're going to hold the spool. So here it's a bit close, I'll move it just now to that side. So you can hold it there. You release at 11 o'clock. You pull down with your left arm while you're pushing with your right arm and you're casting as if you're casting 45 degrees into the air. You never look at the water where you're going to cast. You're looking up 45 degrees and that's where you're going to cast. Now, before we get into swinging, uh, before we get into swinging your sinker and casting where you'll get more distance, and that takes practice as well. That's why it's so important to get your thumb control, your line control, right before you start swinging. Otherwise, you're just going to frustrate yourself terribly. Okay? Um, remember your, your uh, spool control you use as well. Eventually, you start releasing that so it's looser and uh, so your reel can spin faster. And that's when you've got proper line control. Then you can start doing that so it really runs freely as you can see. Another just hint, guys, when you start spinning this reel fast, I mean, in other words, when you start casting harder and this thing starts spinning properly, make sure it's always wet because it will burn your thumb. So either a bottle of water or just take some sea water and wet your spool. Okay, now let's just talk quickly about the reels on the market rod. I'm using the 1423 Saltus rod, Dawa. It's a multiplier rod. Perfect for sliding, targeting bigger fish, medium fish. Very nice, versatile rod. And then guys, we, we know in the market, your old uh, Saltigas, your previous Saltigas, and your Grand Wave reels, Dawa Grand Wave reels was your long distance casting the reels by far the spools spin fantastically fast so you can really cast those reels but since they brought out the new saltiga it's a new bracket of spinning um, this reel really spins and this can cast a mile so make sure your thumb and line control is 100 percent before you start putting power now what i'm going to cover today guys is just getting into that extra power you're going to get um, let's just cover the basics of swinging, all right? When we swing a sinker, the whole idea is when that, when that sinker is out 100% straight, that's when you're going to come through. Not halfway there, not on its way back. It's practice and practice until it's 100% straight and that's when you have to come through. All right, now to get that right, what I want you guys to understand first is what it feels like when that is 100% straight and you connect it because then this reel spins so it's something to get used to so in the part two of casting all i want you to do is two steps remember everything from part one pulling with your left arm pushing with your right arm head up 45 degrees aiming 45 degrees left foot pointing in the direction you want to cast lead a knot on the opposite side of your thumb and making sure your line's a bit wet and uh, i'm quickly going to wet my spool and then i'll show you Alright guys, step one, I'm going to put the sink out in a straight line. I've got a nice drop, a little over half of my rod's length, and that's a good length to start off with. You push it out, you point your rod tip exactly there where the sink is, elbow up as you can see. So over, what you're going to do, you're going to do everything we did in, in, in the first one, and just bring it through. But immediately by doing that, you'll feel the additional spin on your reel. Because there's more power now. It is fetching that sinker in a straight line with the rod. So when you come through, you get that additional power that actually brings it through. So let's do that again. Just maybe aim a bit more that way. my 
line wet a bit. And it's not a bad idea to, to wet your rod tip. Okay. Now I'm going to do it one more time. Just in a straight line. Keep your posture right. Elbow up. Looking 45 degrees. And come through and release at 45. Release at 11 o'clock. But push it into 45 degrees. And that's what you want to do. And get your thumb and your hand used to controlling this reel then. In the first one showed you guys just to hold it like this your sinker not touching the ground 100% level and you start casting like that the difference is now you've got more leverage you're casting from the bottom there all right and your line your sinker straight up so by coming over now you're just putting a, a lot more power into the cast and the spin is a lot more Once you've done a whole bunch of those casts, getting used to the spin on your reel, you practice that over and over again until you get used to it properly. Then you can start looking at moving your body out a bit. I'm going to show you how to do that. Simply do exactly the same, but then I'm going to move my lower body a bit forward, keep my top, my shoulders where they are, and then you can really put power in the cast. And uh, then it really starts spinning. That's why I say just get used to the initial spin off the ground. And once you got that on the hand, then you move to what I just mentioned now. In the first two parts of casting the multiplier reel, we concentrated on the basics that you need to imprint and it needs to become a habit before you will have comfortable and effective casting. Now it's essential that you get those basics right before you attempt in swinging the sinker for a better cast. Line control is essential before you really start speeding up that reel. And as with golf, all the rest plays the essential role to get a proper cast in. Okay guys, remember to run through everything we did in the first one. So you've got your technique right, using your arms, pulling, pushing, using your head up high, aiming there at 45 degrees, your finger opposite side of the knot, uh, make your spool wet so your finger doesn't burn. Part two is where we put it down so you can get the feeling of the sinker being straight out with the rod and giving you a lot more spin on your reel. And if you're used to that, then you can start swinging. Okay, Jen, so the, the principle of it all, you've got a long drop, you've got a more gradual, slow swing, and your chance of connecting with your sinker is much better than if you've got a short little one meter drop. Because that just swings out quickly like that. So a lot of times, especially when you're starting off, it might be coming back already when you when you start go following through with your with your swing or your cast or other times you hit it before it even hits the back so just my advice and what works for me is a longer drop like this and then a gradual you've got a nice gradual swing it gives you that couple of split seconds extra to connect properly when you swing through okay guys now a great way to start is just get your swing right so you swing it and place it softly onto the sand when it when it reaches a straight line with your rod you just place it softly onto the sand when practicing to place it softly on the sand get into the habit of doing this slowly that will ease your casting going forward and once you've got that right that gives you the exact timing you want to follow through and cast it out Getting the swing right and making sure you connect with the sinker takes practice and practice and practice and some more practice. There's no use in not connecting properly in the back, rather than don't swing. Eventually with a lot of practice, you know exactly when to turn around and your timing will be perfect. But like I say again, practice and practice. Guys, now you'll notice a, a much faster spin on your reel when you start doing that because now you're basically bringing your hips into the equation. You've got your left arm pulling, you've got your right arm pushing and your hips is adding. The whole shoulder and hips is adding to, do you want to call it the thrust behind the cast. And that really makes the reel spin significantly faster and getting you a lot more distance. I was going to do it one more time.
Now after a lot of practice and getting this down to a T, fishing really becomes a pleasure. Don't practice while you're fishing. Make some time before the fishing trips or before you go out to get your casting under hand.